I'm coming to you from a job site right here at the ocean. We're in Florida, and I'm visiting a friend who's building a house right here on the coast. We're going to be talking today about fluid applied weather barriers. It's a beautiful day here in Florida. I'm visiting a job site where a house under construction by my buddy Ezio Fabrizi is going on behind us. And obviously, we're not in Texas anymore. Ez, thanks for having me. Tell me about this type of construction behind us here. Well, Matt, this is a residential construction, uh, not your conventional stuff you'd see in Texas. This is a concrete block home coming off of a uh, pile-driven concrete pile project for, for the structure. And so we're right on the coast here. We're built on sand. This is basically a full masonry exterior, right? Yeah, everything is on the exterior here is going to be concrete. It's either going to be concrete block or it's going to be poured in place concrete. Very cool. Well, in today's episode, as I wanted to talk to you about how you waterproof a project like this. I mean, this is atypical from what wood frame I'm typically used to seeing in Texas. Now, I have used some of your blue barrier, and if you've seen some of our other videos, uh, as is the original inventor, he's also a builder. And you're a little like me where you have your own guys doing some of the work on the job sites, which are these guys behind us. Tell me about the process to waterproof a house like this. Okay, Matt. Well, uh, what we have here, obviously, especially up against the coast like we are building this home, We've got a lot of inclement weather. Florida, we it's almost like turning the shower on every 30 minutes at summertime. Mm -hmm. So with all the water, latent moisture, as well as the rain, we have a lot to deal with. Concrete is a sponge. Um, so what we do is tying those dissimilar materials in. We use the polywall system. And so um, these guys have a bucked opening. Talk to me about that the step-by-step -step process when you go from the block, basically hole in the wall, to where we are now. So a lot of this has to do with all the impact product that we have to install here on the coastal part of Florida. So what we end up doing is everything's either poured in place, and when we put timber on top of that, it has to be pressure-treated lumber. Mm -hmm. We have to put that with a masonry anchor, which is we call them tap cons. Yep. Yep. So once those tap cons are put in there, we actually go through and we'll detail that with the 2200 detail sealant. That's our fiber-reinforced detail sealant from Polywall. After we detail the joints from the concrete to the lumber and then over the screw heads, we'll go over it with the flashing membrane. That's our 2400 roller grade that they're using behind us. And so one of the things that I find most appealing about this fluid applied is that you lose some of the origami and some of the kind of hard install, especially when you think about these windows, which happens to be a, a recessed window buck. You know, you'd have flashing, you'd have tapes, you'd have layer and what goes first and what's lower and what's higher. It's pretty incredible to see this when this is all done. Tell me about why uh, I see kind of a taped off square around the window. Sure. Well, that's really for the aesthetics primarily. And we do it because we want to show that not only do we care about the product we're putting on the wall, but we care in the manner that we're applying the product on the wall. We do it because we're not going to really get into that window installation for another six to eight weeks possibly. And if we do anything that's going to be on the outside, even though it may be covered up, we want to make sure it's, it showcases the product properly. That's pretty cool. Ed. So once these guys are done with this window opening, you've got one continuous membrane, right? Tell me about that membrane once it's once it's cured is it moisture uh, sensitive is it will it move moisture through it what's the what's the uh, tell me a little bit more about that okay so the blue barrier system is permeable it'll allow that that trapped moisture in the block to vapor permeate out of the coating without letting any of those larger water molecules through the coating gotcha. it's also a monolithic system but what's cool is it's a fully adhered embedded monolithic system mm -hmm. so rather than putting a tape or, or a sheet good that can allow water to travel behind it mm -hmm. this actually is getting into those smaller cavities and giving you a true embedded adhesion and in, in, in a, a real protective membrane. That's pretty cool. So you've got, let's say, window packages coming in a week or two here. You're going to have all these rough openings prepped. You install those windows, and then you'll come back actually later to do the body of the house. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So then we can tie that membrane back into what we've done around the windows and doors. And, and in that application, because we have larger surface areas, we may use the spray coat application. And then how do you get, uh, I'm assuming this house is stucco, that's pretty much what I'm seeing in this neighborhood. How do you get the stucco to actually adhere to that? So the process that we use is we'll use a mechanical as well as a chemical adhesion process. The mechanical uh, element is done by broadcasting silica sand in during the curing of that coat, that spray coat. Then we'll go ahead and go over it again with a link, and then we'll apply our scratch coat, then our, 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 our uh, we'll go scratch, base, and then finish. Okay, so there's no there's no lath in there, basically, right? Correct, yes. Although you can lath it because it, it is self-healing and, and you can do that. This home, we will not. We'll actually go scratch brown and then finish coat. 
Are most builders doing that? What, what did they do 10, 20 years ago here in, in Florida? I mean, this is a big yeah. sponge of a house. It rains all the time. I'd be, I'd be assuming that these houses are soaking up tons of moisture. Well, you and I have that same building science kind of element of, of what we do. So where do we start to where do we end? You know, here we actually drove timber piles 30 years ago, and we used a lot of regular conventional framed lumber. Yeah. I've taken part in either tearing those apart and, and fixing them or knocking them down and building the structures we see today. So what they used to do between ship lapping, paper and felt paper and nailing it in, we found the moisture find, it's, it'll find its way in and it'll rot that wood out. Yeah. So on the exterior skeleton, it's primarily concrete here. And if there is any masonry, we do, or I'm sorry, any timber, we do go over it with a fully embedded fluid applied system because moisture will just get behind that paper and tape. That's pretty cool. Tell me about the uh, where you've got dissimilar materials. So let's say you've got a pressure treated buck up against the concrete. My assumption is that wood's going to have some amount of movement over time. Um, how, do, how does the blue barrier uh, work with that kind of movement? Joint movement is really huge, especially like you said, we have dissimilar materials all the time. So concrete to steel, concrete to wood, anytime we transition between them, even cold joints, they move at different rates. Because we have the fully embedded adhesion, we're getting a really durable coating. This is at a 60 Shore A, but we have joint movement capability in this fluid. Whereas a tape may pull away or peel off, we won't. We'll actually move with that joint, both flex and, and retract. That's pretty cool. Hey, last question for you. With all this rain, how do you get any work done? I mean, I'm assuming when it rains, you're taking a day or two to let it dry before you use this, right? No, no, absolutely. It's actually contrary. The great thing about it being a moisture cure product and the way that we've developed this technology, moisture is just going to help us cure faster. Whether it's latent in the air or it's going to be in the block, we'll actually pull that and use it as an adhesion promoter. So it could rain this morning, you wait until there's no puddles, and all of a sudden you're ready to go again. Absolutely, or we'll just, we'll just brush those puddles away. That's pretty cool. Hey, thanks so much for having us here. So fun to see what y'all are doing in Florida. Hey, for more information on the Blueberry product that Ez actually invented and is using on his houses in Florida and that I'm using in Texas, check out a link in the description below. You'll see their website. Also, look for our other videos. We made a couple videos together both in Texas and here in Florida. Uh, this company is one of my anchor sponsors this year in the Build Show, so it's been a lot of fun getting to know this Texas company and, uh, of course, the Florida inventor. Uh, follow us on social. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show. Yeah.